We're going to try this a third time. I thought I could try it twice on my computer and that was a mistake and I'm sorry. We are now over on my phone. Uh, I don't know how many people will come back over, but I am, I think maybe it's time to move over to a new platform. Uh, so I'll wait a second as people are getting on. Oh, I'm so sorry. Ay, ay, ay. Hello, Susan and Renetta and Siege and Minda, the third time. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm trying to put this phone in so that I don't have to hold on to it. So we're going to try this again. We're looking at Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. And we're talking about preparing the way of the Lord. Preparing the way of the Lord. There we go. Oh, <laughs> oh well. An interesting Saturday to begin prayer and devotion. So we're going to start one more time. Today, we are starting a new book, Pauses for Advent. So Pauses for Advent uh, is the, the book, very, um, it's the same book, uh, different season uh, that we used before. And uh, the author of the book is Trevor Hudson. Uh, today, if you remember when we did pauses for, we did pauses for Lent and pauses for Pentecost. I think we even did pauses for Easter. Um, in the, each day there's a word and today's word is prepare. Today's word is prepare. So we're looking at Isaiah 40, um, verses one through eight. Isaiah 40 verses one through eight. And um, what does the word prepare teach us for how to live as Advent people? Isaiah 40, 1 through 8 says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the wilderness, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all humankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fall, fall, flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. So if you are just coming on, uh, our scripture today is Isaiah 40, 1 through 8. And our word for today from Trevor Noah, uh, Trevor Noah, <laughs> Trevor Hudson's book, uh, pauses for Advent. Today's word is prepare. And this is what he says. He said, Advent is all about preparing ourselves for the coming Messiah, who has already come in the past, continually comes to us in the here 
and now and will come again in the future. The question we ask today is this, how do we prepare ourselves so that he can come into our lives, into our relationships, and into the fractured and broken world where we live? In Isaiah 40, we find three preparation hints. First, we prepare by clearing a straight path through the wilderness. The wilderness is a lonely place. We are surrounded today by so many people who are living in loneliness. Often, the Christmas season accentuates that loneliness. Connecting with a lonely person can open a pathway for Jesus to, hot, to touch his or her life. Or when we find ourselves feeling lonely, we can risk connecting with someone who may help us meet Jesus anew. Second, we prepare by leveling the mountains and valleys. Mountains and valleys symbolize those barriers that make us feel as though we are separated from Jesus. For example, such barriers may be hunger, poverty, unemployment, or mental health issues. Engaging these obstacles for ourselves and on behalf of others can prepare the way for Jesus to come especially to those who struggle. Third, we prepare by remembering that we are like grass. Grass symbolizes our fragility, our vulnerability, and our weakness. We spend so much of our lives running from this reality, and we often miss the grace, mercy, and steadfastness of Jesus, who is um, strength in our weakness. Embracing the reality of our frailty opens up possibilities for encountering the living Christ. Advent holds before us the challenge of preparation. Are we interested enough in Jesus who makes our path straight through the wilderness who levels the mountains and the valleys of our lives and who reminds us that his word will stand forever. So prepare. Tomorrow we begin uh, Advent. And Advent is not only a time of preparation, it is a time of waiting. But waiting is not um, useless. I know we are, we live in a society that wants to be there, right? To get there right away. Um, but to, and waiting, we feel like waiting is a waste of our time. Like we, we don't really want the time in between. Um, like I wanna get to the place where something is happening. Um, but waiting has a way of um, changing us so that we are really ready to receive the gift when it comes. And so how do we prepare in this time of waiting? Um, this reading from Isaiah, uh, I think is, is a really important reading uh, oh, it has always been, but I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just more visible for me. But I feel like in the midst of this pandemic, uh, there are so many people that are lonely, that feel like they are isolated and um, struggling and nobody cares. And so the first thing that we do is acknowledge the loneliness and acknowledge not just that there's loneliness out there, but that there's loneliness in each one of us. 
And in acknowledging that, we are called to reach out to one another. Whether we are reaching out to someone we know that's home and isolated, or if we are isolated, uh, taking the step out, and I know that's scary, I really do, to actually, um, to trust someone, to reach out to them, is not something that we do very easily in our world. Um, the second part is the leveling, <sighs> that leveling. I feel like in some ways our world is, is becoming uh, more and more mountain, mountainous, creating more and more boundaries for people who can't get over them. Uh, and so as people of faith, it is our job to be doing everything to tear down those boundaries, um, whether it is providing food for people to eat or um, helping people to find uh, uh, employment or, or um, reminding, or, you know, I mean, it's tough this year I, this, that we don't have uh, enough shelters for people that are living on the street. Uh, that is uh, really challenging in our world today and in, in our city as well, in New Brunswick. So what are we doing to help level so that it, so we don't make it so hard for people to get the things that they need to live and live with dignity? Um, and if we can help um, do the leveling ourselves help people to navigate the paths so that they can get uh, easier resources um, and make it um, more, I don't know, it, it's hard, it's very hard. I've ne I never knew that until I lived uh, and served in a city, just how hard it is to get the resources that people need to move forward in their lives. And so maybe during this time of Advent, we do the work. We help walk alongside people to help them navigate and level some of these mountains that are making their lives very challenging. And the third one, I think, goes with both of these, okay? So frailty, not only does it acknowledge that, that maybe we're not as, um, I, don't, I don't want me to use the word strong, I think, we have an inner strength, but frailty understands that we all are vulnerable. Um, and you can see that, you know, just, just making a phone call, if we, if we say we're gonna call someone, making that phone call acknowledges our vulnerability. Uh, there's fears that keep us from doing things. But when we are able to be vulnerable, that I believe is when we are closest um, to what Christ calls us to. Christ was always vulnerable, always willing to come alongside people, to, to allow um, the, his own um, kind of let down, you know, we, we let down the, the ego to be present with another person. That's, that's, that's really tough stuff. And we don't see it in our leaders. Um, we really don't. And I think it's so important. Are we willing to say, you know what? I'm lonely. Or I struggled. Or once I lived on the street. Or once I didn't have enough food to eat. Um, when we are able to be vulnerable with one another, it opens the door. It prepares the way for someone to experience God's grace and mercy in ways they never could imagine before. So if you remember when we did the pauses uh, for Advent, uh, the there was a daily practice that came at the end, inviting you to do something. So today the word is prepare, and this is your daily practice that you're invited to do. Make one phone call today. One phone call to someone who is feeling lonely or struggling. Let him or her know that he or she is in your thoughts. Ask how you can serve them and give uh, him or her, 
keep him, him, keep them close in your heart today in prayer. Okay. So you're going to make one phone call today to someone that you know is, um, struggling with loneliness. And it, that goes for people that are lonely too. Uh, so uh, I want to encourage you to do that and uh, let it enter now into a time of prayer. God, we come to you today at the very beginning of this Advent season, the season of waiting. We acknowledge that there are so many barriers that keep us from being closer to you. There are so many uh, barriers that we create and there are barriers that are created by the world around us. And so as part of your creation, as part of co-creators in the world around us, Lord, we ask for your presence to be with us today. Help us to be vulnerable with one another, to be willing to reach out to those in need, to do of the work of justice, the work of leveling the playing field so that everyone's needs are met. Lord, guide us today that we might be your very presence in the midst of our waiting Help us wait with one another and offer the grace, the mercy, and the amazing promise that we have found in you. We lift all of this up to you as together we pray the prayer that, that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So it was good. I'm very excited to be starting this Advent season with all of you. Tomorrow, um, we will gather for worship at 11. It will be virtual worship, but I was counting up the amount of people that are involved in tomorrow's service through videos. We have almost 25 people from our uh, congregation that are, will be a part of tomorrow's service. And it will be more, you know, each week we'll have more and more uh, voices added to the mix. So I look forward to starting this Advent season with all of you. Uh, we will gather tomorrow uh, virtually on Facebook and on YouTube at 11 o'clock. So I will see you then. Uh, remember, God loves you, my friends. And so do I. <laughs>